Well, good morning. Will you stand to your feet this morning and begin our time of worship together? God is a good God. He's a great God, a great King above all gods. So what we'd like for you to do is to join in with us by putting your hands together and let's worship the Lord our God. He is a good God. Come on, he's been better to you and to me than we've been to ourselves. So come on and worship with us. Come on, everybody. Come on, say, Lord, you are good. Lord, you are good and your Do you believe that today that God is good? Say, Lord, you are good and your mercy.
Oh, you may be seated. I'm not sure if you want to be seated. What an awesome way to begin our worship today. It's so good to see you here in worshiping. I'm David Hall, one of the pastors. You talk about awesome. We had a really great evening last night at Cambridge Square. We had um, our worship teams were there. We got about halfway through our program and then lightning and a uh, threatening storm shut us down. But it was so good to be out in the community and to be there. I hope as you came in through the atrium this morning, you enjoyed some donut holes, and they're all different flavors. Yeah, we are, and it, it looks so good out there. We've got a new setup. Yes. Well, I want you to, today, if you would, to look through your bulletins because there are all kinds of opportunities in those to be in ministry and in mission in our community. Join others who are doing that. We are so excited about our new uh, worship service that's going to be on Thursday night. We're calling it Thursday Night Connect. We are so hoping to reach out to people who aren't in any church or people who love to come to worship but just can't make it on Sunday mornings. It's going to start a week from this Thursday, that's September 5th. It'll be a little briefer than our other services, 45 minutes. It'll go from 6.30 to 7.15. We need a few more people for our Faithful 50. We've been talking about this. A Faithful 50 is just a core of people who commit to come and help greet newcomers, but also they commit that for six months you'll come on Thursday night in addition to your Sunday morning service. So we, we're working our way up to those 50, but we need more. So stop this morning if you can do this and sign up at the information desk or just call me and let me know you'll do that. A lot of people are excited about this service. Here are two now that you're going to see on a video. If you're like me, you've invited people to church only to be turned down because it's too early or they don't want to get dressed up or they're uncomfortable. Well, there's a new opportunity here at Christ Church. It's called Thursday Night Connect, and it's a way to be more comfortable. It's a laid back atmosphere, and it's a way to be a part of our church. Our kids' sports schedules keep us really busy. Sometimes that means that we may end up at the ball fields on a Sunday morning, missing church. Our family's really excited about Thursday nights at Christ Church, where we can worship together at Thursday Night Connect. Good morning. I'm Kelly Abercrombie. I'm going to read the scripture for you this morning. It's from James 2, 14 through 17. So what good is it, my brothers and sisters, if someone claims to have faith but has no deeds? Can such faith save them? Suppose a brother or a sister is without clothes and daily food. If one of you says to them, go in peace, keep warm and well fed, but does nothing about their physical needs, what good is it? In the same way, faith by itself, if it is not accompanied by action, is dead. This is the word of God for the people of God. Let's stand to our feet once again. We're going to we're going to continue singing, lifting our praise. There's no one more worthy than our God. Let's put our hands together.
your attendance with us. There's a red pad for that. It's located on the back of the seat, on the seat closest to the aisle on each row. If you're sitting closest to that, if you would take that out, write in your name, your contact information. If you have a prayer request, please jot that down as well. And then pass the pad along your row and back again, please. We continue in our worship now. This is a special time because it's a time whenever we recognize God's caring for us, God's generosity. And we give tithes and offerings just to show our gratitude. So continue, please, to worship as now the ushers come and we receive our morning tithes and offering. I want to introduce to you all Dylan Davis. Dylan is an intern. We arranged through Lee University, but he's also the worship director at Elizabeth Key United Methodist Church in Chickamauga. As now we receive our tithes and offerings. I 
as I rise, strength of God, go before, lift me up as a way. Eyes of God, look upon, be my side. Yeah. As a way, heart of God, satisfy and sustain. As a heed, voice of God, lead me on and be my guide, be my guide. Oh. sees me Christ be all around me above and below me before and behind me in every eye that sees me Christ be all around me yes. as I go hand of God my defense by my side as I rest breath of God fall upon bring me peace bring me peace oh, above and below me before and behind me in every eye that sees Thank you, Dylan. We welcome you to Christ. Let us bow together in prayer. Loving and gracious God, you are faithful in giving to us, in service, and you call us to, to imitate you in all these ways. You have also called us to be giving people. You have called us to be serving people. You've called us to be loving people. 
And so we ask this day that you fill us by your spirit and empower us to be and to do all that you've called us to do. We meet you here, O oh God. Your presence fills this place. We feel your spirit. And so let us come with open hearts to receive you, for you to replenish our lives, for you to renew us so that we can go forth and love and serve the world. You've given to us as a church together a vision to live beyond our imagination, but to live into your vision and your imagination. So help us to be willing in the moments ahead to make our pledges unto you, to know that you will help us as we make those pledges in the years to come to meet you again as we give our offering to serve you. Lord, I also remember to you those who need you in special and particular ways today. Those who are sick among us, We've had several in the hospital this week, Lord, and they're at home now recuperating. We ask for your continued healing in their lives. And those who have lost loved ones in the last week or years gone by, who need your comfort and strength, we trust you to provide your kind of comfort in their lives. And Lord, we do pray that you will help us as a church walk into your vision walk into your callings, walk into the world you have created around us and around the globe so that we might serve you better. We pray just now the prayer you continue to teach us how to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I want to begin today by thanking those who have worked to put this capital campaign together. We've been focused on that these past few weeks. David Hall has been an excellent coordinator of it, and we, uh, nobody that knows, anybody that knows David would expect no less, and he's done a tremendous job with that. His team included Christine Regnitz, Andy Martin, Lisa DeAndrea, Ashley Henderson, Steve Wright, and Jody Riggs. And then, as always, uh, Randy Liner has done an awesome job with the videos that's been presented. He does just a super job with that. Our staff has done a great job of producing and distributing materials, and several other people were involved in various ways. And we thank each of you for a job well done throughout this time. Next, I want to let all of you know what's coming up in September in Sunday morning worship. All of our sermons during September are going to be based out of scriptures in the New Testament letter to the Ephesians. And so I invite you to be reading that letter in the coming weeks. In fact, this week uh, sometime, it's, it's only six chapters long, so you could read it in one setting. And so I invite you sometime this week to read the letter to the Ephesians. And then as we go through that in September, you can focus in on various portions of it. Next week, I'll be sharing about, and we'll be focused on grace, and I look forward to sharing about that marvelous gift, that amazing gift from God. I hope to see you in worship next Sunday. Yes, I know it's Labor Day weekend. I still hope to see you in worship next Sunday. It is in that letter to the church at Ephesus that Paul wrote, we are saved by grace through faith. But in our reading from the letter of James this morning, this writer says, faith without works is dead. Down through the history of the church, much has been written and said about an apparent contradiction in that. Are works 
necessary for salvation? No. They're not necessary for putting us right with God, but they are necessary for showing that we really do believe. Martin Luther was a priest and church reformer of the 16th century. He is usually credited with starting the Reformation that birthed the Protestant church, out of which have come uh, most of the denominations that we know of today. Well, Luther did not like the letter of James. In fact, he didn't believe it should have even been included in the Bible. He once called it an epistle of straw. That's kind of how you'd put something down in that day, I guess. Uh, he later recanted that. He later said he was a little harsh with that description. But at that point, he felt that strongly about this letter of the New Testament. He was convinced that salvation only comes by grace through faith. And I agree with that wholeheartedly. We are made right with God simply by receiving the gift of God's grace through faith in Jesus. May I say that again in case you've ever missed it. We are made right with God by simply receiving the gift of God's grace through Jesus Christ. But I also believe in what James emphasizes in his letter. He gives definition to what it means to have faith. It's more than just stating a belief in Jesus. It's living that belief. It's putting that belief into action in everyday life. It's more than just a mind thing, a mental affirmation, a marking the right answer on a test. It's more than just talking the talk. It's walking the walk. James puts it clearly. Faith by itself if it is not accompanied by action, is dead. It's lifeless. There's nothing there. Well, it seems to me it's appropriate to use that similar line of thinking in our relationship to Jesus Christ through his church. We believe that having a personal relationship with Jesus is oh so important, and it, but it's more than just one-on-one. -on -one. Yes, it's, that's an important, very important part of our relationship. But it's also a relationship that's to be lived out in the life of the church. We're to serve in mission and ministry of Jesus alongside other followers of his. In other words, being a Christian is a community relationship. On top of that, it's not enough to simply say, I believe in Jesus and I'm a part of this church. We reveal that to be true by putting that belief and those relationships into action. The way you live your life, the way you relate to other people, especially the least and the last and the lost and the lonely. Your involvement in shared ministry with other Christians all shows that you really do believe in Jesus Christ and that you've made him the Lord of your life. You say and you live as if to say, Jesus, you're the most important thing in my life. I want to do everything that I do and live my life every day according to you and to follow your way. These past couple of weeks, we've been reflecting on the past and imagining the future as a church. We've been celebrating the courage and faith of the people who began Christ Church over 30 years ago. And I want to take a moment here to acknowledge the pastor who was a driving force in that beginning. Dr. Steve Salee was a devoted follower of Jesus Christ and a visionary leader in his church. He was certainly the right pastor for Christ Church as it began. And I know that those of you who were here under his leadership and while he was pastor have many wonderful memories about that time and cherish that time together. He went on to give that same kind of leadership at Cokesbury Church in Knoxville. And although I had known Steve in years prior to that, I got to know him most fully and, and, and uh, much better in that last year of his life because we were connected there at Cokesbury. There have been several other pastors that have been wonderful servant leaders in this church over the years, some of whom still worship with us on Sundays. And the church has had many leaders and staff members down through the years who have given of themselves in so many ways to serve the mission of Christ our Lord. That continues today. 
as we all seek to take the next step toward moving into Christ's future for us. We've also been trying to imagine what that future looks like. We're beginning to seek a vision of ministry when we no longer have to deal with building debt. But there comes a time when you have to do more than just imagine that happening. You have to put your desire to see it happen into action. Now is one of those times for Christ Church. Today we begin receiving our pledge cards of what each household among us is willing to offer to God to wipe out this debt. It's a time of celebration, really. It's a time of coming together as a community of faith to gather our resources for a shared purpose. Now, I'm not all sure about this analogy, but in some way of thinking, I, I compare it a little to pregame warm-ups before a college football game. You might expect that this time of year. Some, some started that yesterday. Others, most all the other teams will start this weekend. The players have been working out on their own all summer. And now they've been working together in preseason camp. Uh, the time of the game is nearing. They're all decked out in their school uniform. Now they bring it all together as a team. They give their self for the greater purpose of the team. I have a confession to make. Vicki and I have not been giving to the building debt over the past year and a half. When we first came to Christ Church a couple of years ago, we focused our giving on the regular offering. We did at that time, in those first few months, we did put a small amount toward the building debt, but uh, we began to notice almost immediately that the, the giving toward that building debt and the payments that needed to be made each month, that that was sufficiently funded at the time. And, and so we felt like we wanted to put even that small amount over into our regular giving. And, but now we see and know that it's that time to be a part of this Imagine Beyond emphasis and be a part of this final push toward getting rid of that debt. So we come today to join with others, and there may be some of you who uh, have become a part of Christ Church in these past three years since the last campaign that focused in this way. And you too, when you came a part of the church, you saw that that, that same uh, giving, that same um, uh, emphasis was sufficiently funded, and, and so you decided to wait. But now it's that time, and we all come together today to be a part of that. One of my favorite stories in all the Old Testament scriptures tells of the situation not long after Moses had led the children of Israel out of Egypt. God has told Moses to build a tabernacle. And here you see an image of what that tabernacle might have looked like and the camp that was around it. It was a place where the people would worship God. They would sense God's presence among them. God has gifted some of the people uh, as construction workers and some as seamstresses and some who would help outfit the priest who would serve at the tabernacle. And so these people would construct the building and they would provide the furnishings for the structure. All that was needed now were the various materials that would be needed in that construction and in that outfitting. Well, beginning in Exodus chapter 35 at verse 5, we get the list of what was needed. Check this out. Everyone who is willing is to bring to the Lord an offering of gold, silver, and bronze, blue, purple, and scarlet yarn and fine linen, goat hair, ram skins dyed red, and hides of sea cows, acacia wood, olive oil, spices, and onyx stones and other gems. Now, I just want to mention right quick that in this offering we're about to receive, uh, I guess it would be okay if you wanted to bring gold or silver or bronze, but at this point we do not need goat hair or ram skins or uh, hides of sea cows. We'll, we'll get back to you if we ever do need that, but in this one we really don't. So the people start bringing what they have as an offering, and Moses calls the workers together to start doing their building and their constructing and, and uh, their sewing together of various materials. But one day, there's a verse there that says, one day the workers had to stop working so that they could go to Moses and tell him that people were still bringing stuff even though they had all they needed. 
Listen to these two verses in Exodus chapter 36. Then Moses gave an order and they sent this word throughout the camp. No man or woman is to make anything else as an offering for the sanctuary. And so the people were restrained from giving more, from bringing more, because what they already had was more than enough to do all the work. Imagine that. Certainly, they didn't stop giving offerings in general. They knew in that time, as we still know today, that we give of our resources, we give our offerings as a major part of our worship of God. But for that particular project, there came a time to stop giving to it. Well, we're aiming for that time related to this last building project here at Christ Church. There, we have a vision of having no more building debt. We can see the end of that debt out there in the future. We celebrate today the opportunity to come together and contribute to that vision. But it seems to me that there's a a life lesson for all of us individually in our individual lives coming out of this. Because for all of us, we either have already had or will have in our lives situations and projects and circumstances that are long-term. We're going to be in it for a while, and we know that. And sometimes when they're long-term circumstances or situations or projects that face us, they can seem overwhelming. They can seem almost impossible. The key is to simply give of ourselves. Give of yourself what you can to that situation or that project or that circumstance until one day it changes or it comes to an end. Of course, the more foundational key is that you trust God to guide you in all of it, no matter the situation, no matter the project, no matter the circumstance. It's, it's one way of summing up what a Christian approach to life in general is. Trust God and give what you can. Amen? Trust God and give what you can. Let's pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks for all that you have given. We give you thanks for the opportunity to be in shared ministry as your people. And we pray that you would guide us in our giving even in this time as we look toward this vision that you've given us for being able to share resources now so that we can focus those resources in other places to serve your mission in your future in this place. So guide us in this time and guide us every day in all situations and circumstances of our lives that we simply give what we can to whatever it is, but that most of all we trust you with all of it. We give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Well, in just a moment, as you are led, we invite you to bring your pledge card here to the front. There are baskets along the front. I see four baskets along the front here. You can bring those as an individual or as a couple or as a family together if you like. While that's happening, and and again, please know, as I've shared with you before, know that if for whatever reason you're not bringing a card at this point, know that that doesn't make you any less Christian and it doesn't make you any less a part of this church. Uh, We appreciate all that's given in various ways in the life of the church. But while this is happening, there will be a video playing on the screen, and we're actually going to play through it twice. It's a video that celebrates our shared ministry here at Christ Church. So as I said, we'll play through it twice so that if you think you saw something or somebody in that first one but you're not sure, be watching for it the second time and you'll catch them then. Let's share now what God has laid on our hearts. And by the way, as I've said before, if you've not prayed about this, I invite you not to bring it. I invite you to go back home and pray about it. Bring it by the office later this week or bring it to worship next week. It's important that this be soaked in prayer. Let us give to God at this time. One, two, three, four!
Amen. We give thanks to God for shared ministry, and it's wonderful to be a part of it in this place. If this may be the day that you are ready to make some decision for Christ, it may be a new commitment to Christ, uh, a desire to follow him, and this is the day to do that, or it may be a renewal of a commitment. Know that you're welcome. You can come here as we close the service or after the service or any day. I'd love to talk with you about that and, and help usher you into that decision. It may be that you're looking for a church to unite with in mission and ministry. Know that you're welcome as well. Let's stand and sing together. Cannot express my gratitude 